Hi, Andrew here from Systemic Creative. We're here to talk about systems archetypes. Thanks for joining us. It is part of a series, so if you've seen this introduction 15 times before, do feel free to skip it, I won't be offended. At Systemic Creative, we are here to help organisations and businesses grow and develop, to be more productive, more effective and more resilient, but at the same time to have better well-being throughout, happier staff, happier teams and a happier, more positive organisation as a result. We look at the organisation as an organism and this is a paradigm which helps us to make leaps into how to change organisational dynamics for the better. It's a blend of systems dynamics, systems thinking, leadership, teamship and most importantly listenership. Now our organisational development programme has been described as groundbreaking, paradigm shifting and experiential reprogramming and radicalising the way that people work among other things. So do check out the links in the description below to our programme if that's of interest to yourself, your business or your organisation or community group or whatever. And of course do subscribe to our channel for more content. We also have some fun stuff on the channel as well, what the team get up to and some fun projects and things like that. So you can join us for those sorts of things as well. So we're here to talk today about systems archetypes. Now systems archetypes are part of the wider discipline of systems thinking, which is something which was pioneered really by Donella Meadows back in the 1970s with her release of a seminal work, Limits to Growth which is also the name of a systems archetype, which was the first and it's one that Donella Meadows came up with and articulated in the book. Now, I highly recommend Donella Meadows' work, for, particularly for people who are new to systems thinking. She's a great teacher and a brilliant thinker, so do look her up on the web. You'll find her on YouTube as well, so, so look into Donella Meadows. Well, systems archetypes are also called systems traps, and the reason for that is it's an archetypal set of system dynamics into which Almost any system can fall if you're not careful, particularly human systems. Organisations, businesses, community groups, anything that involves people can fall into these systems traps. And generally speaking, they are things that can be quite disruptive and that we would want to avoid. So in these talks, we'll look at each archetype. We'll describe the archetypal system dynamics. We'll look at some real world examples of it. We'll look at what the leverage points in the system are and Arguably most important, we'll look at how to avoid falling into those systems traps and if we're already in it, how we get out of it. We will assume a bit of systems language knowledge already, but we'll also do our best to describe things and how they work as we go through the talk. Okay, let's dive into today's talk. Exponential success or success to the successful systems archetype. Uh, this is a nice simple one. If you're looking at the whole series, this might be uh, a bit of a relief. Some of them are a little bit complicated. This is a nice straightforward one. It's one which could be quite familiar, depending on your circumstances or, or where you come from. So uh, let's get into it. So we have initial conditions, which are the way, for the, for the purposes of this model, are the way in which the resources are allocated to begin with. And then we have two straightforward reinforcing feedback loops. And we've got A and B. As with some of the other archetypes, you could have A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It doesn't matter how many uh, people or organisations or whatever you want to consider uh, are, are in there. It's the same principles apply, but we use two just to make it simpler to look at. So two reinforcing feedback loops, and we've got sames on the arrows, little s meaning same. Uh, and what that means is whenever there's an increase in one, it causes an increase in the next. So if resource allocation here is in favour of B, so this increases, this increases the resources available to B, which increases B's possibility of success, which further increases the, re the resource allocation to them. Now if we consider this uh, profits, for example, in a system with a fixed amount of money, that means that there is more money for B to invest in their business or enterprise or whatever. Now, this can become a runaway situation where other players or other people in the system or the companies in the market can be left out or 
completely sort of unable to engage in the market whatsoever. Now, real world examples of this happening. Unregulated capitalism is one example and, and the one with which many people might be familiar. If you see, for example, in a particular society or country that the gap between rich and poor increasing or even exponentially increasing, that's this systems archetype in play, success to the successful, uh, that's in play. Where regulations are working well and that isn't happening, where there's greater equality, it means that this systems archetype is, is being avoided. But there are other applications of this systems archetype which might be more pertinent to our everyday lives. From a social aspect, bullying is something which uh, is an exponential success systems archetype or can fall into it. Uh, and if you think of the resources in, with this situation, are sort of confidence and social reputation as opposed to material resources. So somebody may, may start out, the initial conditions may mean that somebody is, is more confident and if they have a propensity towards aggression, they may start bullying. So let's say B is uh, more naturally confident and is good at gaining social reputation, is also quite aggressive. B might bully A and thereby gain greater confidence and greater social reputation through the bullying of A. And, th and thereby, the, those resources, of, let's say, um, social power, social ability to manipulate social situations, is allocated to B. People look to B as that person, that powerful person. Uh, and that becomes success to the successful. So B gets more confident, is allocated more social resource as time goes on, uh, and bullies A more and more until A is out of the picture or is you know, severely affected by this process. So uh, this is often at play in a bullying scenario. An overly competitive team environment or especially a team environment where bonuses form a major part of the rewards that people experience in the working environment can lead to this systems archetype. Uh, and what happens here is let's say we've got several people. So let's say this is a sales department in an organization and we've got A and B, but let's say we've got A, B, C, D and E. Okay, we're only looking at A and B there. And let's say B again is particularly good, right? He's particularly good at selling stuff and quite rightly, B is rewarded for that. You know, it's a sales department, nothing wrong with that. So B uh, gets more allocation where we think, well, actually B can sell more products. So let's give more resource to B because B's going to do really well. The problem with that is there's less resources for A and also, you know, C, D, E and F or whatever. And over time, B does really, really well. But B gets to a maximum. There's only so much product that one person can sell, right? And the other people are underperforming. So the organisation as a whole actually suffers if B is at their maximum and A and C, D and E or whatever are underperforming because the whole organization is, is only selling what B is able to sell. So what you really want to do is get B to teach A, C, D and E how to do it. Why are they so good? What techniques are they using? What's happening? Rather than simply allowing the exponential success dynamic to kick in. Because if everybody is successful, if everybody's doing well, then the organisation itself or the system itself will do much better. So where these archetypes play out within our organisations, whether it's a negative one or it's a bullying scenario, because that is common in the workplace, unfortunately, or if it's an arguably positive one like this, where you've got one person who's exceptionally good or exceptionally fast, it doesn't have to be sales, you know, it could be some other sort of situation, the organisation will be suboptimal if this archetype plays out and that person is allowed to, 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 to gain all the resource and exponentially you know, add to their success because there's only so much they can do. So that points to what the leverage points in this system are, which really are the resource allocation, including the initial conditions, and the system rules or regulations that allow people to, to take part in certain ways. So to avoid it, we need good initial conditions. We need good, clear system rules and good regulations. We need a culture of 
cooperation, sharing and mutual success leading to the greater good. And whenever we have that, we generally experience more successful systems or organisations. Generally speaking, countries where they, there is a greater equality in terms of income have less conflict. Organisations where there's a greater equality in the success of staff or team members are more successful themselves as a result. So this is good for everybody. And a quick note on that, and I'm not, this is a tangent, a philosophical tangent, which is it's easy to go down with this discussion. And I'm not going to do that because this isn't the place to do it. It's important to create equality of opportunity. But it's also important to avoid the tendency to overreact to this systems archetype and try to create equality of outcome. Now, some people are just better at some things than others, and that's okay. It doesn't mean that celebrating success will always lead to this systems archetype. And it's easy to sort of overreact against it and saying everyone should always be equally successful all the time. And, and that would be nice, right? But it isn't real life. We're all, we all have strengths and we all have weaknesses. We're all better at some things and worse at others. So what we need to seek to do is balance our organisations or our systems in order to take, play, in order to take advantage of everybody's skills and what people have to bring. And it's important to have the right people. You know, if you're running a sales department and someone just isn't good at sales, they're probably not suitable for that department, and that's okay. We're aiming for equality of opportunity, fair regulation and fair system rules. We're not necessarily saying everything should be always equal all the time, because that would actually suppress creativity and suppress dynamism in a system. You do need to allow for that fluctuation in order for spontaneous creativity to occur. That's something we talk a lot about on the Systemic Creative Organisational Development Programme, which I mentioned in the introduction. So do check out the links to the programme below. There's a lot of tools there to make organisations more effective and empower people within them. Thank you for watching this. I hope that's been helpful. If you've got any insights or thoughts or comments, as always, uh, whack them in the comments. Always appreciate hearing what people think about these sorts of things. Uh, do let us know. Thank you for your time. If you haven't seen the other videos in this series on other systems archetypes, do check those out. There's lots of good stuff there. And have a look around the rest of the channel. We've got a mixture of informative stuff and fun stuff that we just kind of get up to extracurricular to work sort of thing so do check that out and subscribe if you like what you see thanks for watching see you next time